Hey, I'm Bill Walton, and we're going to sports school. The greatest skill that any player can have is to make his teammates better than they can possibly become by themselves. The best way to do that is by becoming an outstanding passer. The two-hand chest pass is your baseline foundation to becoming an outstanding passer. As our demonstrators will show, every time they interchange that basketball, they're stepping forward with a different foot every single time. The power in a pass comes not from your upper body, not from how strong your shoulder muscles and hands are. Basketball is a game that's all about footwork, and that is incorporated in the pass by giving you the power to step forward and deliver. Whether you're delivering a shot, whether you're delivering a pass, whenever you're getting rid of that ball, always step forward and use opposite footwork every single time to be in a position where you can become a complete, total, and well-balanced player. Notice on the delivery of the pass, the snap out, those thumbs, the push of the ball right there. You don't want a big wind-up. You want it nice and quick. Notice that the interchange in and out of the triple threat position is incredibly important. Remember that every time you receive the ball, as it comes in, the elbows go out. As it comes in, the elbows go out, and that's on a pass reception, on a rebound, on picking up a loose ball, because this position of the triple threat is always what you want to do, and that ball has to come directly into the triple threat position of your teammate so that he can quickly get on to the next play. The bounce pass is a fundamental tool that you use in certain situations when you're leading a player, when you're trying to throw through traffic, when there's all kinds of defenders around. The bounce pass is executed the same way footwork-wise and arm-wise as the two-hand chest pass, but now it's the pass out. Pass out, don't pass it down where it bounces close to you. You want the ball to bounce two-thirds of the way between the passer and the receiver so that the ball bounces up into the midsection and that the receiver should be catching the ball basically in an underhand gloved position, the ball will come right up into him. If your bounce pass is coming up into the chest area, that's not a good pass. If it's down in the knee area, no. It wants to come right up into this waist area so that the player can, on the reception, bring it up and then get it right into that triple threat position. The whole idea of the bounce pass is after it hits the floor, it slows down a little bit. Now, you're going to have bounce passes where you have backspin on the ball with the thumbs coming underneath. You're also going to have bounce passes where you're going to have top spin on the ball where it needs to pick up speed. When you're throwing to a guy who's on the run, cutting back door, so when you put the top spin on it, then that ball will pick up speed when it hits the ground. Most importantly, throw a pass that the receiver can catch. In the over-the-head snap pass, it's very important to realize that when that ball is being interchanged back and forth, you do not want to have a big giant wind-up where the ball comes behind your head. It's from the triple threat position, up, and then the step forward and the snap. Remember, the power, the delivery is going to come from the step forward. Throw it hard, you throw it crisp, right into the forehead and above area. You don't want to throw an overhead snap pass that hits the player down in the waist area or in the knees. You want to be able to turn that ball into something that the receiver can use. This over-the-head snap pass is very good when you're outletting the ball, when you're swinging the ball around the perimeter, when you're trying to deliver a nice pass out of a double-team situation. This is a very effective tool, but must be mastered with the proper fundamentals, which we teach here on a regular basis at sports school. An additional pass that every player is going to have to incorporate and develop is the over-the-top baseball pass to the long player who's streaking out in transition for the fast break. This pass, much like throwing a baseball, throwing a football as a quarterback. 
You have to be able to lead the player and get it over the top and hit him in perfect stride. Have your receivers be timing their different cuts so that you practice time and time again. Now, after we get that part, with the right hand, you have to also learn how to do it left-handed. Realize that it's going to be very difficult to throw it with the accuracy, the strength, the power, and the velocity that you do with your strong hand. So, have your receivers be up a little bit closer, but learn how to do it. We now incorporate this pass off of the rebound. So the player will toss it up as everything else is the same, the footwork, the step, and over the top to the receiver. We do it right-handed first, and then we do it left-handed. We don't need a big, huge wind-up. It's right here into this position. You're cocked, you're ready, you see it, and then the throw. That wind-up takes you out of the triple threat position, which prevents you, if you're out of that position, from getting to an alternate move when the defense makes their adjustments at their appropriate time. Please remember that when you're throwing this pass, this is something you want to make sure gets completed. Don't just throw it out there wildly, hoping that it's going to be successful. The game of basketball, to you, should represent the conquest of substance over hype. Never mistake activity for achievement. When you're out there playing, realize that your skills are going to be developed over a lifetime of commitment and of sacrifices. And if they don't catch the ball, it's your fault. No matter what, it's always the passer's fault. And if you throw a perfect pass and they still drop it, just walk up to them and say, hey, where would you like it next time? The behind the back pass, how to get the ball to your teammate when all else fails. When you're throwing and executing that behind the back pass, the footwork is completely different here. Now you're no longer stepping forward. You're stepping to the side to get your back out of the way. And you have to do it both right-handed and left-handed. And again, this is something that you practice time and time again. Be able to do the same thing where you just get the momentum and the step forward to make that ball come fluidly out of the release point. Same as with your shot, same as with your two-hand chest pass, but now that ball is coming smoothly and softly. Also, you have the wraparound behind the back bounce pass. And when you're learning how to do this, you can go to a wall. You can go to the garage door. I don't recommend you doing this on the walls of your parents' house, though. That's not a good thing. Go out, find a nice concrete wall, a brick wall, where you're passing that ball, all the different aspects behind the back. Over time, all these fundamental skills become a critical part of your entire package. Never forget that in the end, basketball, this great and most perfect of all games, comes down to creativity, imagination, and decision making. So when you're out here playing and you find yourself up against it and nothing else is working, your teammates aren't catching the ball, why pass it to them anyway because they're not making any shots? Hey, you can always be coming right down the lane here and throw the ball off the backboard to yourself and catch it. It totally fakes out the defense every single time. They have no idea. They think you're going to be shooting the ball. You throw up a wild hard ball, but realize that like in rebounding, you're passing to yourself and so you know where that ball is going. All the passes that we've talked about up to this point have been with the action out in front of you. But now we must address what do you do when you're the pivot guy, when you're the guy who has everything at his back. That's where the real creativity and fun and excitement comes in because you don't know really what you want to do. You're in here, you're thinking about making your own offensive play, but you also got cutters, you got screens on the weak side. So you may be throwing passes like that, just wild as can be. You're here, you got, you got a backdoor cut, you throw a bounce pass to him right there. And now you're here, maybe he's coming right behind you, you step out a little bit and just drop the ball right over your head. Who knows? It's all about what you want to do. You're the creator. You're the artist. You're the guy who's dictating the pace and tempo of this action out here. So please come up with something real special and let us know what it's going to be here at Sports School. As we come to the end of the line on passing here, remember, the most important thing is that your teammate catches the ball. 
if I'm standing right here, I'm not going to throw an over-the-head snap pass to him. I'm not going to burn him out with a behind-the-back wraparound pass. The simplest pass of all, just flip it right to him. Put it up underhand. Remember, this ball is everything. This is the ball that you have to control. And with your teammates, the possibilities are endless, dizzying out there. Use your mind, think, dream, create, but help him, set him up. Give him something that he can work with. Make him the star, and then you'll all just be running out into the night celebrating yet another victory.